fire up. There's the sugar shack. So it's coming in here from all the all the line you have ran out here, going right into the uh, sugar shack. Uh, that makes it pretty easy, I'd imagine, once you get it all set up. You can see that the sugar water running like crazy in there. How many trees you got tapped on the, these lines? 185. That's what it takes to get a good flow like that. All right, so now we're inside the sugar shack. How's this thing work now? All the lines from the taps to the trees come into the releaser. And then the releaser fills up with sap, shuts the vacuum off, and then the sap will dump into our head tank. And when we're boiling, the sap goes from the head tank into the evaporator, goes through a series of channels up into our syrup pan, and then we draw off our syrup whenever the consistency is ready. And then after we draw off, it goes over into our filter and canner unit. It goes through a series of three separate filters to clean all the sugar sand that the trees actually pull up. And then we bottle it right here. So and then when this thing's fired up, you got your cut out there, smoke blowing out of there, huh? So you put your fire in down here? Yep. I guess that would make sense considering you got all this wood out here. So. And then there's the finished product for your pancakes, beer, whatever you need it for. We're going to make a beer with this today. So this ought to be pretty interesting. If not, we can try it again next year, right? We're going to use uh, some of that sap water he's going to hook me up with instead of brewing water. All right, so the sap starts out in there after it dumps out of the pump. Okay, then it's automatically uh, feeds over into the boiler here, and that's at evaporator at 219 degrees. Is that where you boil at? That's where it finishes. That's where it finishes, okay. So then you'll fill up this bucket here, and you walk over to your... Uh, three stage filtering canner unit it's got three filters in there yeah and then you get this beautiful uh syrup right here it's coming out slow because uh you don't have it heated all he doesn't have it all the way fired up just now getting it warmed up so flame there look at that nice we got all the wood out here I'd love to see this thing in full swing, but uh, he put in a good 15 to 20 hours the other day and sap was just pouring in there, so it's taking a break now. Okay, so what you got there? This is our grading chart to tell what color our syrup is, whether we're making light amber, medium amber, dark amber, or grade B. And what's this? This is the one that... Uh, this is what we, we are jug, getting ready to jug now. Okay. It's kind of in between a light and a medium. Okay. And then here in a couple weeks, what, you'll have something we'll closer? We'll have the darker stuff. Closer to this? A little more maple flavor. Okay. Filling up uh, our brew, or our carboy with our what's going to be our brew water. Come right off the maple tree over there. Got all kinds of bags out here. It's a remote 
location so this isn't hooked up to vacuum like his other set of woods over there where the sugar shack is. So these just hook right onto the tree. See, he's got his tap there. It's handy way collecting the sap. All right, well, we made it home uh, 90 miles southbound of uh, Ashland area where the syrup came from. And uh, there was a little bit of maybe some ants and some things. So I'm just filtering this through a grain bag here that I normally use for hops. And um, then we're going to boil this to sterilize it. And uh, we'll be on our way. So I still got another carboy full. And uh, I'll pull some of this off once it's boiled, and uh, we'll use that as our top-up water if I need it. All right, well, trying to get a gravity reading here on the sap. Finally got it to warm up enough um, from being outside in the cold. And it looks like it's a 10-10. All right, well, this is the sparge water. And I'm going ahead and uh, pre-boiling this for a few minutes after I filtered it. And I'm doing the same thing outside. Alright, our pre-boil for uh, 30 minutes helped condense that down a little bit. I think, uh, well, we boiled off a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. Let it cool down to my steeping temperature. And I'll pull some, uh, about a gallon out of here. Steep my grains. I'll rinse with uh, the water that's in the kitchen there. I'll rinse the grains with that, and then we'll be underway. Six pounds of syrup ready, and then I got that much left, probably between five and six pounds, and then that'll go in the secondary um, if this doesn't carry the maple flavor over enough for me. All right, well, we've chilled it. Now we're adding six pounds of syrup, and then uh, then I'm going to aerate it. I'm going to check the gravity, and then I'm going to aerate it, and then pitch it on top of the yeast cake. So we'll see how this works. And I think we're at our yeah, we're right at six gallons, so we won't need any of that sap water that we pre-boiled and pulled out. Now we're checking the gravity, and uh, it came in at 1080. So wow, it was a good thing that uh, good thing I only used four pounds of uh, light malt extract. We're aerating the wort, so it looks like we got it got it going pretty good. Better hold up a second. And this is the first time I've had to do this. I generally just aerate by hand, and it's always worked well, but. I decided to go ahead and try this method. Well, pitching on that uh, yeast cake was apparently a good idea. We uh, we got quite the action going on here. It started sometime between uh, midnight last night and five this morning, so somewhere between a three and an eight-hour lag time. So, but it's chugging away.